The Sony ZV-10 was the best camera for vloggers and lifestyle shooters, but with new cameras coming out at a breakneck pace, is the Sony ZV-10 still worth it or is it too old? And the right camera for one person will be completely different than the right camera for someone else, so you have to make sure the features and specs inside the ZV-10 are right for you. But there's two key features in the ZV-10 that make it better than every other camera in this price range. Because when it comes to finding the right camera for yourself, specs and features are definitely important. And in order to make sure you have the right camera for your shooting style, you have to make sure it has the right design. And the Sony ZV-10 has a unique design that you will not see in any other camera out there because the ZV-10 was specifically made with vloggers, content creators, and lifestyle shooters in mind. The body and design is very compact and very minimal. It only has one button at the top to switch between photo, video, and slow motion, and a quick menu on the back screen to adjust all of your major settings. Best of all, it has a three mic array built into the camera. Plus, it has a side articulating screen so you can see yourself while recording. And on top of that, you can also purchase a separate Bluetooth vlogging handle that it also works as a tripod and wireless remote. Inside the ZV-10 is where the real magic happens. The ZV-10 has a 24 megapixel APS-C size sensor. Now 24 megapixels is pretty standard in terms of resolution, but the Sony ZV-10 sensor has two awesome features that take it way beyond a standard sensor. Because the ZV-10 sensor is back illuminated, it is shockingly good in low light. I can easily shoot at 10,000 ISO for photos with no issues of noise or grain. And the sensor also has an onboard processor that gives you really fast and reliable autofocus. This is really helpful for vloggers and lifestyle shooters that just like to whip out their camera and shoot from the hip. And the ZV-10 has subject detect for both humans and animals, which works phenomenally in both photo mode and video mode. And the autofocus is extremely helpful when it comes to photos because the ZV-10 shoots at a blazing fast 10 frames per second, making sure that every single shot is in focus and 10 frames per second lets you capture any kind of fast moving action from a fast dog to a fast car. And the ZV-10 also shoots in 14-bit RAW, which delivers the highest quality photos and you can easily take these photos and edit them to your heart's content and easily get professional level results. And in terms of photos, in my opinion, it is on par or slightly better than a lot of newer cameras coming out there because Sony RAW has so much flexibility in it when it comes to editing. But video is where the real magic happens because the ZV-10 shoots 4K video, but it's super sampled from 6K effectively giving you the resolution and quality of 6K in your 4K video. And at the time of launch, the ZV-10 was one of the few cameras that did this. And the ZV-10 shoots 4K at 24 and 30 frames per second at 100 megabits per second data rate, which is everything you need as a vlogger, lifestyle shooter, or content creator. It also has buttery smooth slow motion in full HD at 60 frames per second and 120 frames per second, still at 100 megabits per second data rate. However, before you make up your mind, there is one key feature that the ZV-10 does have that the other newer cameras do not and that's cinema profiles. The best ones that I personally like are Cinema 4 and S-Log3. These cinema profiles give you a lot more dynamic range and also a better color base to work with, so you can easily get a very cinematic look from this color even without 10-bit color. And the ZV-10 also has digital stabilization built into the camera for smooth footage while vlogging or walking, and also there's stabilization built right into the kit lens as well, so you will always get smooth footage with the ZV-10. The main appeal of the ZV-10 is the design because this tiny little camera is built in every single way to make it as easy as possible to operate. It has this beautiful three array microphone built right into it. And this thing is really made for content creators, vloggers, and it's taking all the technical hassle out of your way so you can just be creative. Hey guys, Mike here. So this is the Sony ZV-E10. I'm gonna show you how to take your first picture with this camera. So I purchased a standard sized SD card for my camera. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that in first. If you wanna store stuff on your camera, you're gonna need an SD card. So look for standard size ones. I definitely recommend this one. And you put it in right there and then you push it down until you hear a click. Next thing we're gonna do is put the battery in and you just push it down until you hear a click and this holds it in place. And if you need to remove it, you just push it this way. Next thing we're gonna do is close this door and lock it. And I've already got my battery on this camera charged up, but if you needed to charge it up, you could plug in USB right here and that would charge the battery that we just put in. And there's actually a light that turns on when it's charging. So now we wanna put a lens on this camera. 
And I did not choose the kit lens for this camera. There's an option for a kit lens. I actually just chose the body of the camera and I bought my lens separately because I wanted a very specific lens. But if you want to attach any lens to this camera, here's how it works. The lens is going to have a white dot right here. And there's also a white dot right here on the body of the camera. So you just want to line those two white dots up and then you want to turn it until you hear a click and then you know it's on. And now we just want to go to the top of the camera and we want to flip this switch to the right to turn it on. So what's unique about this camera is we've got three different modes and we have a button that we push in order to change modes. So we have the camera, we have the video, and then we have S and Q, which is slow motion. So I'm going to press this button to switch modes and we're going to notice that this right here is going to change. So I'm going to click once and that's going to switch it over to a camera mode. And this M right here means that it's in manual mode, but I don't want it in manual mode. So what I'm going to do is click this FN button right here, and that's going to bring up the main settings that I can use to change stuff. So right now I want to change that shoot mode away from manual into something that's more automatic. So I'm going to click right here in the center of the wheel, and then I'm going to change the shoot mode. And I'm going to change the shoot mode to something that's all the way at the top. And this is called Intelligent Auto automatically identifies the scene's characteristics and shoots a still image. So then I'm going to click this button to set it. And now we are in intelligent auto mode. And now we're ready to take a picture. So my mom literally an hour ago gave me a shark tooth necklace. So I'm going to take a picture of the shark tooth necklace and show you what it looks like. So I've got the shark tooth in the viewfinder and I want to take a picture, but I need to make sure that it's in focus. So I'm going to hold this button down halfway. And what that's going to do is it's going to focus in on the shot. And then once I'm focused in, I press it down all the way and it's going to take a picture. And the picture ends up looking like this. And I did not edit this picture at all. That's directly from the camera. And that's all you need to know to take your first picture with the Sony ZV-E10. So thanks for watching this video. Hey guys, Mike here. And I'm here with the Sony ZV-E10. So I want to talk about something. So this thing right here is a flip out screen. And when the screen flips out, you can do a lot with it. It's very good for creators. But what should we call this? Should we call this a touch screen or should we call this a touch menu? So this screen is about three inches diagonally. And this screen, you would think that because you could touch it, that you can manipulate any setting on the camera. But they actually built this in a way where you can only do certain things with it. For example, I've got a shark tooth right here that my mom gave me a few hours ago. And I want to take a picture of this, but if I want to take a picture of this, let's say I just want to see what it's going to look like. This menu, or I'm sorry, this screen right here, if I touch it, it's going to focus specifically on that area. And that is what this screen is for as far as touching. But if I want to adjust settings in the menu, what I actually have to do is click right here, and then I can adjust specific settings for taking this picture. So technically it has a touch screen and you can do things with that touch screen, but if you really want to adjust settings, you have to go to the menu and you have to use this little wheel right here and you have to click around and change settings that way. But they did add this really cool setting that I want to tell you about. So if you click on the menu button right here, it'll take you to this menu. And one of the options here is called my menu settings. And if you take a certain type of shot on a regular basis, you can set up everything under one menu setting. And all you have to do to switch to that is just go to this option and click the one that you want and it'll load all your presets. Overall, I think this touchscreen is very helpful for adjusting things like focus. But when it comes to actually selecting menu items, I kind of wish that it worked more like a smartphone. But overall, it works and it works good the way it's designed. So thanks for watching this video.